What's good, everyone? Alex Jeteris here with another Knicks episode of the Knicks, Jets, etc. podcast. So with me is always my buddy, my coach, my pal, the man with the plan, the guy who's ready for New York Knicks basketball, the guy who's ready to see John Wall go to Philadelphia 76ers <laughs> and Ben Simmons go to the Houston Rockets because he's been preaching this all day long. My guy, the one and only John Malika. John, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah, dude. I, you got just more. He's got to go back to the ex-girlfriend, man. Sometimes you got to go back to the ex-girlfriend and in order to move on, he's mm. got to reconcile. You both have what each other need. Just take it and move on, man. I've been, I've been saying it. I've been saying it for years, dude. I've been saying it for years at this point. Jesus, that's that's just disgusting. I don't need to hear uh, going back to ex-girlfriends. That's nasty. All right. I mean, I mean, I mean, Dow Morey has to do it, dude. That's the only way the NBA can move on and Ben Simmons can move on. He's not going to the West Coast to the Sacramento Kings. Uh, but dude, you know what this means, right? This means that the NBA is back. Like if if we're talking trades like this, I mean, the summer league is way in the past, dude. We're here. We're here. I mean, Nick's training camp, dude. We're here. Yeah. And speaking of we here, we got one of one of my we got our boy, one of the top Knicks content creators. You know him out there at CP the franchise, founder, CEO of Knicks Fan TV. My guy, CP. How are you doing today, my man? Fellas, man, like John said, bro, we're two weeks away from training camp. Let's get it going. We got the band back together. I'm ready to go, man. First of all, happy to be on with you guys. Uh, congratulations once again on the deal with Fansider. That's a major, major accomplishment for you guys. And, and uh, Appreciate again, it. happy for that. And, you know, again, anything you need from me, just let me know. But I'm happy to be here tonight. We appreciate, appreciate it, him. man. Well, known as no, some t- some people know you as CP the franchise. Some people know you from the games, and some people just know you as the Max Kellerman Slayer. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Kellerman Slayer, man. Yeah, that's a fact. Um, unbelievable, unbelievable ride, man. For sure. <laughs> We're going to get into that later, but you know, let's let's dive into these Knicks topics because we got we got a yep. full docket today that we got to get into. We want to make sure we cover everything. So. Let's start off with uh, the news that was uh, reported by Empire Sports Media. Our guy, Alder Almo, Luca Vildoza will be coming back to the New York Knicks this Thursday. We reevaluated from his foot injury. Uh, guys, CP, I'll start with you. What do you, what do you think yeah. about that, man? Well, you know, it, it was reported over the summer that that uh, he was leaving summer league due to the foot injury. It was unfortunate for him because, you know, a lot of us, we wanted to see him play and, and you know, see him get acclimated with the team and the speed of the NBA and so on, because, you know, his Olympic performance was just not good. Shot 31 percent from the field overall, I think about seven points, three dimes, 17 percent from three. So it was pretty abysmal performance. Then he came over to Vegas. I had a chance to uh, ask him, you know, what he was bringing, bringing to the Knicks. And he said, well, you know, my defense isn't too good. So I was like, all right. (laughs) Bad answer, bad answer. (laughs) So the poor kid was like a deer in the headlights. I'm like, oh, man, I I done scared this kid now. So, you know, didn't play so well in the summer league and went home, unfortunately. So he's going to have a chance to to redeem himself in training camp. But I think overall, it'll come down. They have one roster spot left for the 15-man roster. And Mm -hmm. yes, they did invite Bay on a non-guaranteed deal. I just think at the end of the day, they invested the money in Vildoza. They paid 750 grand to buy him out of his team, gave him the partially guaranteed deal. I believe it was a four-year, $13.6 million deal, partially guaranteed. Mm-hmm. I think they'll they'll see that through a little bit, you know, and, and I think he'll make the team. He'll be on the bottom of the depth chart. He'll have to be watching, but I think that'll serve him well. Get used to the speed of the game, practice with some of these dogs on the team, you know, with, uh, go up against McBride and practice and IQ and Rose and Kemba and, and get used to playing against these dogs, man. And, and then we'll, we'll see what happens as, as the years go by and, and see what type of contributions he can make to the team. But I think he'll end up making it still. Reading my mind. I was about to ask you that question. So, John, do you think Luke will, will make the team as well? What, what are your thoughts on Luca right now? Yeah, I mean, I agree with CP that the Knicks have a substantial financial investment into him right now, and it wouldn't make sense to cut him and then sign whoever is left in the market just to fill up that roster spot. It really doesn't make too much financial or, I mean, am I allowed to say it? Am I allowed to say that we have a competent, you know, front office? I, I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't I don't think that a competent front office would, you know, maneuver that way. And so, yeah, I think Veldoza is going to stay and. What I, I mean, think about it. Think about from the time that we signed him to where we are right now, right? He didn't play any games, but from the time we signed him, people were like, oh yeah, this guy's going to start. 
Yeah. This guy, yeah. This, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's yes, gonna, bro. He's going to be like 25 just minutes like, off yo, the bench. like, yo, relax. <laughs> yeah. Relax. Man. And then, yeah. like, all of a sudden, like, with the, it started moving a little bit, right? And then when it went to Pablo, and Alex still wasn't liking that. <laughs> Alex no. was like, this guy can't even be Pablo, guys. What's everyone talking about? <laughs> and, now, and now we're here, like, all right, hopefully he just makes, you know, no, the last please. roster spot. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, I think he can make the last roster spot. Facts. <laughs> Oh man, that was quite a wave. As soon as we signed, everyone's like, "This is our starting point of the future." Oh, like, wow, <laughs> sheesh. <laughs> we Knicks fans, man, we are. We this tells you how thirsty we are for yeah. point guard. Yeah, oh, really dude, tells you. I'm <laughs> starving out here, bro. We're oh, starving. Oh, 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 those oh, hive got activated <laughs> immediately and then took a quick fall from grip. Man, <laughs> it, it was worse than the Frank hive. Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, let's not oh, say that word. Oh, oh man, let's 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 Frank let's 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 You know, shout out to Moke. He just put out an article for Basketball News, and my God, that thing got a lot of action. I don't know if you guys saw it. I, I, like, I saw that, but then, you know, it was on, a good article. Man. Come on, Moke, man. I mean, for <laughs> for him to say that, you know, the whole Frank situation is an indictment on on the Knicks player developments. I don't, I don't see it, man. If that was the case, he's he's he hasn't even garnered any interest. From any the twenty nine other teams in the league are not even interested in his play development, but it's the Knicks' fault. It's the Knicks' fault for drafting him, but for the lack of play development, the player has to be good too. No, that's a fact. Player has to be good. Player has to show up. He did mention he had that one line where he said, "You know, it's also on Frank." But it was, that was very yeah. quickly, uh, yeah. uh, very quickly, yeah. very quickly yeah. mentioned. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So let's let's not go into that, guys. Do, wait, do you guys think? Do you guys think he's going to end up somewhere? Back in France. <laughs> I mean, wow. yeah, it, it was um, – I, I forget the team. Um, yeah, you shared it. That that Nico Mannion was, is playing for now. Nico Mannion has an intestinal infection, so he's going to be out. And it was said that that team was uh, was interested in Frank, but it wasn't clear whether or not the, the interest was mutual. I'm sure he's trying to stay, you know, and at the NBA level. I would think playing internationally would be the last resort, but yeah. – you know, we'll have to see. I think I think once you go through training camp, anything is possible. You have injuries. You have guys that don't, you know, meet team standards. And maybe he'll he'll crack, a, you know, vet minimum salary roster spot somewhere. But right now it's quiet. It's quiet wow. for the French Prince, man. You might have to, you know, it's New York Fashion Week. You might have to, you know. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> you know, you might have to get it to model in next, man. That's my guy. Uh, I'm still Frank uh, I'm still Frank uh, I hope he ends up in San Antonio or Toronto or something. I think, I think, I think, I think it could actually develop there. I don't yeah. know. I, 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 I still I got mean, a soft spot. I got times. a soft spot. I don't know. Yeah, we all, yeah. Have, we all have a soft spot. Man. Look, yeah. we all have a soft spot. We all wish our players could look. I thought Ron Baker was going to be the starting point guard at some point. Ah, uh, shout out to Ron Baker, retired for for, for, for the man, world. To you, be this kid, I saw, I saw him play in Westchester. I saw him play in Westchester. And I was like, wow. And I remember the first game I saw him, he dropped like 13 points, had 10 assists, had nine boards. I was like, this is the guy. I was so like, he sold me. <laughs> He's doing. He's going to be cooking for the New York Knicks. Nope. Ron Baker, yeah. the shot maker, man. We got the wrong <laughs> Wichita State players, but those are the old Knicks. Those are the old Knicks. As a fact, those were those are the old Knicks. Now, as John said, we have a competent front office, which gives me goosebumps to even say. And so we saw the develop. We saw that we saw the turnaround. Uh, you know, but I guess to finish off before I even go in that direction, I do agree that I think Luca's going to make the team. I don't think you're going to just put money into him and then let him walk away. I think he will make the team. I don't see Dwayne Bacon unless Dwayne Bacon just somehow improved his game all over. But moving on to the next topic, with this competent front office, we saw them take a major leap this past season. We saw Julius Randle come in, be our most improved player, make the second All-NBA team. We saw, you know, a standout rookie in uh, Emmanuel Quick. We saw R.J. Barrett improve from 32% from three to 40% from three and then improve uh, just having a mid-range game as well. So we saw a lot of guys take that next step. So th there's just a lot of expectations, I feel, from the fan base, from, from media, from, from everyone at this point that the New York Knicks will either maintain or they get, take another step forward. So there's a few questions I got we, we should just run through right here and see if I'm going to start off with you first since you are our guest. Um, since we have so many expectations, man, like what do you think – who do you think – takes the biggest leap next season. Do you think it's going to be RJ? Do you think it's going to be quickly? Do you think we'll get a surprise yeah. from Mitch? Who, who do you got? You can give it me one, two. Give me, give me, give me one yeah. of your options. I think, I think it's going to be RJ, man. I, I still okay. think it's going to be RJ. Uh, Drew Hanlon, once again, he was, he was asked on, uh, on, uh, 
on Twitter what they are working on. And again, it's it's RJ off the dribble. So he's, he's trying to add that that layer to his game. And he took a big leap. He went from 14 to 17 points per game. As you said, 32% from three to 40. 75% from the free throw line. The kid wants to be great, man. The greatness is in him. And I'm not one of those people that gets, you know, uh, uh, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs over, <laughs> over that, both the highlights. I'll post the highlights to trigger people and trigger, yeah. reactions and trigger all the overreactions. I'll just sit back and laugh. But sure. He's it's cerebral with RJ, man. He he wants to be great and he puts the work in. And I just feel like the improvement that he made from rookie year to sophomore year, I think it's going to continue playing with, a, you know, more competent players, adding Fournier and Kemba to that lineup. I think it's going to help in RJ's development in terms of the spacing and just uh, facilitating, you know, that those two guys are going to bring to the offense and opening things up. I, you know, quickly, I still think, I think he'll take a step, but I still think there's, he, he needs to work on that intermediate part of his game. You know what I'm saying? And I just mm-hmm. don't think it's as fluid yet, mm-hmm. but I, but with quickly, I think I will put him second because I feel like in his second year, you know, it, it'll slow down for him. We'll get used to what, what teams are trying to do to him and, you know, work from there. So I, I think the game will slow down for him and he'll play a lot better like, and, and with a full slate with Rose Burks in that lineup. I like that, that second unit lineup. So I think quickly we'll be there. OB, I think Obi will will again be improve, but the minutes will be so restricted for him. Mm-hmm. I don't think you you'll really you're not going to see summer league Obi because he's not going to be getting 30 minutes a night. He's going to be getting something in the teens. But I still think he'll mature and, and play a lot better. So those would be my top three. I think Mitch will also, uh, if healthy, um, take a step up just by playing with competent point guards, whether it's Rose or Kemba, starting off the bench, you know, getting him involved in, in the Gotham lobs and, and things of that nature and his impact on the defensive end. I think Mitch will also be there. But if I had to rank it, I'm going RJ, quickly, OB, Mitch. Okay. Okay. For quickly, though, I know like – Look, we, I was on your show and I said 15 mid-range jumpers all throughout last season, which is just yeah. insanity. <laughs> that's the craziest had, number. The fi- only 15 <laughs> mid-range jumpers throughout an entire season. I don't know how that's even possible. But do you see him like – we saw him in summer league improve – like t- he tightened up his handle. We saw yeah. some playmaking. Do you think we're going to see a little bit more uh, him like be like the combo guard at this point? Like I know he was more of like an off-ball shooter last season. But do you think we're going to see that with him, uh, D- with D Rose in the back uh, in the back court? Like, well, what do you think? I still see D Rose dominating the ball, just mm-hmm. just being that guy. You know what I mean? Just being the veteran that he is. Mm-hmm. I, I still think that the second unit is going to run through him. But that won't be a bad thing for quickly. You know, having quickly play off ball was was a strength of ours last year with with Rose facilitating. Then you add Burks. You add Burks, who's also a capable playmaker and facilitator as well. So I think you, you put quickly at, at what he does best, which is shooting the ball. <laughs> you know, shooting the ball yeah. off catch and shoots. Mm-hmm. Now again, once the defense starts to adjust and starts to run him off that three point line, where will he go from there? Mm-hmm. You know, that's where I want to see the evolution of quickly. We did see some playmaking prowess in the summer league. Him and Obi seem to have some good chemistry there. Can that carry over into the season where he's facilitating as, you know, on the secondary break as a secondary ball handler in some pick and roll actions. And then again, how many mid range jumpers will he improve there? Will he improve uh, in his, in his rim attempts where it's just, float or a bust can he can he augment that a little bit and add some versatility in in inside inside the three-point arc that's left to be seen i agree with that and i think what i want to see out of emmanuel quickly too is like his layup package i know we saw some highlights yeah. of him working on the on his handle and being able to take it to the rack um in, in i guess in these open gyms and in these practices because he only you know he finished in the 37th percentile amongst guards uh when it came to finishing around the rim and only finished fifty six percent of his shots, and mm. that was on what was it? That was on <laughs> uh, an abysmal 39, 22 out of thirty nine attempts around the rim. So yeah. we need to see we need to see that bump up to the hundreds. Uh, so I would like to see that out quickly. I think that's where it comes for me. Uh, Mid range, we didn't even see it during summer league, so I'm not really expecting it. But we'll see. That's we'll see thing. what happens. That's the thing. Dude. I was going to ask. Yeah, what, what, what do you want to say? That's the thing, man. Like, IQ, I, I have high hopes. You know what I mean? I, I, I want him to expand from that Jamal Crawford, you know, role. But from where? Like, where is it going to come from? You know, I mean, we, we right. just saw him a month and a half ago, you know, and he was playing ball. So 
I, I just don't, I just, I think it's really optimistic of us to believe that. And, you know, you're talking about minutes, CP. You know, let's talk minutes. Alfred Payton is not here anymore. Yeah. He's, not, he's not here for eight minutes to just, you know, take the tip off, hang out for a second, and then just leave. Mm-hmm. So the, Kemba Walker, you know, hopefully he's healthy. Knock on wood. He's going to be eating up all those minutes. And then we have D. Rose. And to be honest with you, the person who, in my opinion, is going to get phased out the most is IQ. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned Obi. I don't think it's going to be Obi that's getting phased out. I think – so – Correct me if I'm wrong, but one, one of our issues last year is we had nobody off the bench for Randall. I, I know that Tibbs doesn't sit Randall. I get, I get that point. But, you know, even if he were to sit him, there was just no offense in, you know, obviously our center is not getting us offense. And then there was no there was no big man to get us offense either with Julius Randle. I'm hoping that Obi can fulfill that Amari Stoudemire role off the bench for those, you know, 20 minutes. Like, I, I'm not going to go crazy. I'll cap it at 20. But I think that if he can get 20 minutes and maybe like eight points, four rebounds, you know, and a defensive play off the bench, that impact would be, quote unquote, most improved for the Knicks. Like that impact would change everything. You know what I mean? Like, because if we have D Rose and IQ just hanging out there and we're not super relying on them to just like hopefully IQ hits five threes. You know what I mean? So he could come back in this third quarter. You know, hopefully D Rose gets that crazy layup package going so we can get in there. Hopefully Obi stabilizes it. But if you if if you want me to like really, really sit here and dream, it's Mitch Robinson, CP. Like you said, it's Mitch Robinson. I need Mitch Robinson to get off his injury hump. I need him to get off his foul hump. I need him to just stay on the court and be Tyson Chandler. Like if you could just please just do that. Mm-hmm. And then we have Noel off the bench. And then, you know, he's not, we're not going to put so much pressure on him and his joints. Poor guy. I mean, you're at the games, dude. You see him being wrapped up (laughs) with the medicine ball every Every, single time out. Every play, you didn't think (laughs) he was going to make it to the end of the game, man. Every play. It's crazy. So, like, we need to keep him alive. And we saw how valuable Taj Gibson was, you know, towards the end of the year. So, we need to keep these guys healthy. Mm -hmm. And it's all going to start with Mitch. If we have Mitch there, that's killing it. If we have Obi off the bench, just doing something decent. And if IQ could just stay the same, like that's all I need from those. I don't need IQ to, I know we want him to turn into Rip Hamilton. It's not going to happen guys. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's not going to happen. He just, gonna he's just going to be Jamal Crawford at least this year. But you know, uh, like the, the last note on RJ, I just have this crazy, you know, like, you know, like when you just have no worries about somebody, like I have no, he's not even on my mind. Like RJ okay. Barrett doesn't even cross my mind. He's not in my, my, my debate. Like he's fine. He's really in that Randall zone for me. Like mm-hmm. if someone's going to come up to you and start arguing, you know, do you think Randall's good? Do you, like, you're mm-hmm. just going to be like, dude, he's fine. Like he, he's, he's like, and then for me, RJ is fine. Like I think he's, he's Jimmy Butler, but better. Or as uh, David Zenon says, he's uh, uh, Jimmy Butler with a shimmy. So, you know what I mean? Like, and, and, and I'll take that, yo. I'll, I'll take that. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it's Mitch. I'm hoping Obi steps up. And I'm hoping IQ just stays the same. With Kemba Walker there, IQ staying the same is incredibly valuable. It, it's not desperation mode. That's right. like that's like cherry on top mode. And if we can get IQ to get five threes on the cherry on top in the fourth quarter, we're going to be blowing teams out, which is, I mean, unreal to say. And it sounds like I'm talking in September because I am. You know, talking about blowing teams out, but that's what it looks like on paper. So then, John, just to wrap it up, who do you think takes the? You think Mitch is the one who takes the biggest leap forward this season, or? Yeah, just just by simply being on the court, Mitch gets that. You know what I mean? And I think not only is he going to be on the court, I think he's going to be like an impact player. I think he's going to have a Noel type season from last year, but it's going to be Mitch. Like I, I really truly hope that, and I'm putting all my marbles into that because I do think he's going to get the extension before the first game of the season. Okay. Okay. And I, and I, and I agree with, I agree with, so I'm, I agree with CP on who takes the biggest leap forward. Cause like, as we had in our, like our season awards pod last week, I had RJ Barrett as winning the most improved on this team. I think he just is that type of guy who's just going to come out here. He has that determination to get better, that determination for greatness as CP mentioned. I just don't see how he's going to allow to be anything less uh, at this point, And he has so much more to add to his game. And I only see him putting in the work and the effort, whatever, whatever it will take, you know, whatever it takes. It's like the Avengers saying mm-hmm. that's I feel like what what RJ is. So I, I expect him uh, mm-hmm. to come out there and just 
rocking. I expect IQ to be the one that comes out next and starts to impress. Um, I agree with you on OB. I think I'm just concerned like where the 20 minutes comes because I just Tibbs yeah, just I general see. nature is just play the best players. Like, you know, like he was yeah. running Taj like 32, 36 minutes out in Chicago. And I, I just see Randall just getting 30 some odd minutes. You know, if we if we get 15 minutes from OB, I think that is being gracious from Thibodeau. Yeah. Although yeah. I don't I don't see, although I do see. Obi taking a step forward. He did show something in summer league. I still think he has to develop a little bit more confidence, but I'm, I'm like what I see from, but so I would go, I'd go uh, RJ IQ OB Mitch. I just need to see Mitch be Mitch. Just like show that he has yeah. taken development, be that guy. As you said, John last episode, the guy who needs to be most improved is Mitchell Robinson. So <laughs> yeah, what's, what's it's only, it's only way the Knicks that? move forward. It's only way the Knicks move forward is if, Mitch Robinson is there because if we still have this big question mark, especially with this contract, like it, whether we extend yeah. him or not, it's going to be an issue. Like Mitch Robinson is, is really a huge X factor for the Knicks this year. Big time. The biggest big X factor. You, you think um, he gets the extension CP? Um, You know, we were talking about that on, on Sunday show. <laughs> I don't know if, if, him and and his and his new representation do that. I don't, you know, it does, does the question is, does he gamble knowing the injury history? Does he gamble on a, on a good season with better players and take it into the off season, you know, test the market, or does he take the team friendly deal? If I were him, I would take the team friendly deal because again, you, you just don't know um, if he can get through 82 games, just the way he's built. I just don't think he, he is. He's only making 1.6 million this year. I think he should take it. You know, I, I think he should take it. I would have to figure it would be in a number around, you know, Jared Allen's getting about 20. I think Mitch would get somewhere between, say, 13 or 15. You know, I, I, I think he, I think he can hit that number. And if I were him, I would take it, man. And I think that's the perfect number for him. I think that's what he should be aiming for, was it? Didn't the Post say it was somewhere around like 44 million that they were, that the Knicks were looking to, to offer him? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that was the number. So if, if I'm Mitch, I'm taking 44 because – you know, well, we already saw we already, we also discussed the Nerlens Noel contract. So we already saw what happens when you just pass up money like that. So mm -hmm. take take the best offer sometimes and just show that you can get better. And I feel like the New York, I feel like this front office would be the front office to modify a contract that they wouldn't necessarily walk you. Like I feel like they'd honor it to a certain degree if you show that you're worth it because they like to maintain the relationships. I feel like that that's something that they would do. Um, it wouldn't be the first time a team has modified a contract. We're not talking about. Scotty Pippen, uh, Chicago Bulls, uh, where you're just stuck on a, a small term <laughs> deal. Uh, so I, I would see the, I could see the Knicks doing something like that. Mm -hmm. Scotty yeah. deserved a deal. That's the difference, man. <laughs> that's a fact. That's that's another story. Facts, Facts bro. <laughs> that's another story. But you know, we got we got another we got another big guy on the team, Julius Randle. As everyone's been mentioning, uh, we already know he's going to be the MVP of this team. We already know he's going to rock all the way through this season. We probably he's probably going to play all. 80 some odd games just because that's how he's built. He's built like a tank. But who's going to be the wood, next guy? Alex. Knock on wood, bro. We need Knock Julius, bro. We need Julius. But who do you think is going to be the next guy to, to make the impact on the team? CP, I'll start off with you again. 100% Kemba. It's 100% Kemba. Mm -hmm. uh, we we now have Ro – Rose was, was, that, was that guy, but we now have, even at 75% of who he was, a competent pick-and-roll point guard. And again, I think that that opens up everything uh, when he was operating out of the high pick and roll, how he can shoot the mid range jumper finished his rim attempts were down this year. Again, could you blame it on the knee injury? We'll see what happens next year, but he finished in the 95th percentile and finishing around the rim, like 69%. And when mm -hmm. you're used to Peyton bricking at, at the rim, <laughs> even Rose not being as efficient at the rim, RJ Julius, that's a breath of fresh air. Yeah. So now you have a guy that you're going to have to respect his drives and when he collapses at defense, now it opens it up. You got RJ on the wing. You got Fournier on the wing. You have Julius on the wing. You have Gotham lobs to Mitch. I think Kemba's going to be that guy that makes it happen, even if he's, you know, again, 75% uh, Kemba. I think it's still going to give this offense a lift just because of, of the way he can operate on the pick and roll. You know, the thing is, when, when you watch these other teams, especially in the playoffs, um, 
it's about creating advantages, right? When I looked at the Hawks, the way they create advantages, it's all through Trey, pick and roll, his three-point shot, you know, but then he can go to his wings and they can create for themselves. So there's so many ways that they can beat you with the Knicks. It was really just like, okay, it's Julius <laughs> and it's Iso. Yeah, yeah. Iso, Iso Julius. Ball, yeah. And then it's, you know, catch and shoot for RJ, catch and shoot for Bullock. Uh, you know, Rose will come in and create for himself. Burks to to a it's less- mellow offense, bro. I call it the mellow offense. It, it, it's honestly. mellow offense. So <laughs> I feel like just having Kemba here being a dynamic pick and roll player. Still, I think it, it's going to give us again options to create advantages on this team. If RJ adds that, you know, um, shooting off off the dribble, that adds that. So I think you know it, it gives Julius some help. But overall, it's Kemba, man. That this thing is, has to flow through Kemba. I think he's going to be a big impact in the starting lineup. You don't think it could be RJ being that next guy, like uh, who could make the most impact on the team? Or do you think he's just still too young and we still don't know? He's still I, just an unknown. Well, Kemba, Kemba, Kemba being the point and, and a ball dominant point, he's going to have the ball in his hands. Okay. You know, so it's going to be on, on him to make things happen. You know, he, he's not the combo guard. He, he may not, he may not, it may not have to flow through him. Obviously it's still going to go through Julius, mm-hmm. but Kemba's not just the, you know, the, the, the combo guard that's going to play off ball. He, he's going to, he's going to be counted on to make plays and be a playmaker for us. So I think he, he's going to, his usage is going to be much higher than RJ's. I think RJ's going to be more so playing off of him. And then also with, with Kemba is, uh, is the clutch factor. You know, just it was a couple of years ago. I think his last year with Charlotte, he was second in the league behind Harden in terms of total clutch points. Now, again, he may not be the same guy, but I factor in playing at home, playing at MSG, playing with a chip on the shoulder. I just feel like he'll be another option for us in crunch time as a go-to scorer, and I think he can get it done. Is that chip on his shoulder coming back from like a down season with injury, or is yeah. it chip on the shoulder? Okay. Yeah, I, I think sure coming that. back from a – I mean, he, he finished fairly strong, you know, all mm-hmm. for that. But I think, you know, there are doubts there. And just coming back to the garden, man, he, he's the, – the energy is going to take over, man. I'm telling you, the, edit, the energy is going to take over, man. He, he's he going to want to be that guy again. He was already at your team's uh, home opener this past uh, this past weekend he, in the – He's Rocking the blue. Yeah. Rocking the red hat. He he's was at, at the, the Yankee, Yankee game. game. You know? Yeah, Kemba's in it, man. He's he's invested, and and I just feel like he's gonna. You're gonna have those cardiac Kemba games, man. You know you're gonna have one of those like forty point games at MSG where he's just going dumb. And I feel like he's gonna have a couple moments in the clutch as well. So I think Kemba's is on 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 pace to be the the second guy that has the most impact uh, next to Randall. And him doing dummy stuff in MSG is going to make me spend way too much money <laughs> buying all yeah. this Knicks gear. And, uh, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. One thousand percent, bro. One thousand percent. Dolan is he's, uh, <laughs> he can't he's doing wait. a money dance at his crib right now. And I love Derrick Rose, too. So it's already like Derrick Rose jersey and a Kemba jersey. It's uh, just, yeah. just, write, just write it up already. Mm-hmm. It's going to happen. John, what about you? What do you think? Who do you think is going to be the second guy on this team? Well, I think the second guy has to be RJ. But I'm on, I'm on I'm all aboard the Kemba train, man. I I CP is waxing poetic about somebody dropping forty points, and not only that, a, a point guard like a, a legit point guard dropping forty points on the Knicks, like sign me up. Like I'm, I have no qualms about that. And you know, the most important part of that, you know, say he drops the forty points, is like the next game, right, where they're scouting, and like CP said, he's gonna demand that respect, even if he's seventy percent. And he's going to kick it out to RJ, who is leading the league from corner three. He's going to, you know, dish it out to Fournier, who can, you know, get a shot. He's going to dish it out to our guys who, I mean, like somebody like Kevin Knox, right? Like, I I know he's not popular, but if Kevin Knox is out on the corner and he's open, he's going to hit a shot. If you give the ball to Kevin Knox and somebody's guarding him, he's going to not, he's going to just look like, you know, I look at CYO and I get the ball. You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) like and and, and that's okay right this is not his game like he needs to be open off you know a collapse and a kick out or someone needs to screen for him and just is what it is and i think that kemba opens up that game you know you ever watch league pass after a knicks game 
right? Like a West Coast game that usually ends up being the Warriors or something. So I know it's not really fair, but you're just like watching them. You're like, oh my goodness. Like, how is this even the same game? Like, you know, how, like, how is this the same? Like, how is this both NBA basketball? You know what I mean? Like what I just watched and what this is. And so I'm hoping like a point guard, like Kemba Walker does put us on the map, does demand respect. And then that just changes our whole offense. We're never going to play ISO, you know, Randall anymore. Or for we are going to play ISO Randall, just not the majority of the time. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I agree with both of your sentiments on Kemba. I definitely think it has to be him. I would like to, I would like to see RJ take a big enough leap where, you know, we don't have to be reliant on Kemba just because I'm worried about his injuries and coming back from that, especially the knee injury and having a, the stem cell uh, surgery done for it. Um, Dude, Bartolo but, Colon's all about that stem cell and that, and that elbow. <laughs> oh my god! I think, I think Kobe had the knee, uh, the knee stem cell as well. So hopefully, hopefully, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he did. He, he went to Germany for that procedure. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. The whole. Okay, that's right. Having yeah. a doctor over Germany. I remember the whole Germany uh, yeah. controversy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. So. I yeah I agree with you guys about Kemba being that guy. I would like to see RJ like help facilitate as that as well, take some of the pressure off Kemba and Julius as well, just being I guess the third option because RJ was the second option last year by de facto because looking at our starting lineup, he had to be. Uh, Hopefully, he takes a big enough step to to help and alleviate Kemba because when I look at like both of our point guards, both who are injury prone, both who are getting to really close to the end of their careers. Mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just worried about Kemba being that guy to just rely on. I know you mentioned 70, 75% CP, and I agree with that. 75% Kemba, that's a hell of a deal for $8 million, and mm-hmm. that's still a guy you have to respect. Look, they have to respect D. Rose, and I think D. Rose is <laughs> maybe closer to like half of what he used to be because he's not that explosive like mini LeBron James guy. Careful, don't, don't, don't trigger the Rose hive, man. Watch your words <laughs> on Rose. Oh, man. No, 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 they're going to come for you in the comments on Twitter. <laughs> trust me, man. I, it's I, okay. I haven't to fend them off since the trade, bro. Trust, <laughs> trust. Even, even when you pay him compliments, they, they find the smallest thing in like, Oh my god. You don't know D Rose, man. You know, the, the, the Rose Hive, the, the, not to cut you off and go on a tangent. The Rose Hive, they'll sit there and watch, you know, his MVP highlights and then come back and tell you how wrong you are about him, you know, in this present day. That's how they roll, man. That's classic. Oh, man. CP's been through the ringer. Oh, yeah. No, I can see it. You can see it. The man's tired of all the Rose Hive just oh, attacking him left I'm, and I'm right. Tired of it, man. With the Frank Hive, with the Vildoza Hive. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. Good. It's I, I totally feel because he likes these guys, right? And anything he says now about them, people start freaking out. Now he has to defend them, but now he now his point is all you know is all gone because now he's like he ends up not defending. He's like, yo, I just said I, I we need a starting point guard. He's fine. Like I get you, man. I get you. We we it's we all, all go through it. We all yeah. go through it, dude. It's all good. It's all good. We all know it's all for the love and fun of the game, right? And I'm a D Rose fan too. I got the shorts. I always bought a sneaker, so I'm a big <laughs> D Rose fan too. I used to hoop in those things four times a week all the time. So please don't attack me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a friendly plea. <laughs> but no, I agree. So like getting back to what I was saying, like with those, both those guards, just like injury prone. That, that's why. That's why I hope for RJ. But I agree with both of you guys that I think it's going to be Kemba. All right. So with with all that said, since we know, since we have an idea of like who we want to take that big leap, who we think is going to be that second option to help this team move forward, what do we what do we expect the record to be? You know, what do you, what do you guys got, John? I'll start with you this time. What are you thinking? I mean, I, I gave Holito the fifty burger, which I know is being yeah. super facetious, <laughs> but we were getting hyped. We were getting hyped on that pod. <laughs> so. I, I I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna give him that 50. I'm never gonna shy away with it. He told me <laughs> he's, <laughs> so, he's holding you to it. Yeah, I said. know, I know. So I'm just gonna stick with the 50, bro. I don't want, I don't want the smoke. Yeah. I'm keeping 50, bro. I got you. Just give me the 50. See, I'd rather see, be wrong on that. See, if you, just so you know, Julito came on here and gave us the 53. Uh, Ooh, 53 yeah. wins. Julito talking spicy, man. <laughs> yeah, so I think it, I play the prices right. 50 burger. Oh, yeah, wow. man. What do you got, wow. CP? We we're getting hyped on the pod, man. We we're getting hyped. 50, 29. <laughs> I mean, I mean, to go 53 and 20, a lot has to break, break right. Yeah. That includes yeah. health for Rose, Kemba, and Mitch. Three, three important pieces. RJ and Julius have, have shown the ability to stay durable. So it's really Rose, Kemba, Mitch. They stay healthy. I mean, I think it's still a stretch. And, and, you know, just real quick on the RJ thing, I think for him to truly 
be that second impact guy, I think we really have to count on him affecting those moves in the, in the mid range, whether it's off the dribble or finishing better at the rim. And because it just mm-hmm. hasn't been there last year, I think it's hard for me to really see him. Yes. He'll improve. I think he'll improve in those areas, but I don't think he's, he's he'll get to that point where it's just like, all right, he's yeah, going to yeah. be our next go-to <laughs> guy. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. He'll still have to be a role player of some sorts, but a, but a good one. I'm going to go, um, 46 and 36. I think yeah. that's that's what I said on the show. And I'm gonna stick, I'm gonna stick with it, man. I like that. I'll go 46, 46, and 36. Okay. What seed uh, does that get you? What seed does that get you? I think so. ESPN has us in the sixth seed at 44 and 38. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but there I think there was only like one game separating us in Boston, who was in fifth. <laughs> Actually, let me, ahead let, me, of us. let me just double check that and make sure that's accurate. ESPN had us in, and Al, you you can you can edit this, yeah. right? Okay, all right. Mm-hmm. Hang on, Alex. What, Alex, what do you got for your? Uh... Yeah, see if I got forty eight and uh, what was it uh, thirty four? That's that's yeah. what I got for the Knicks. I feel like forty eight and thirty four. Yeah, forty eight and thirty four. Okay. So I'm going. We're close to fifty, but just not there. Yeah. I feel like we're going to get some uh, some interesting wins that we're just like, I, they're going to be head scratching wins for us. That's I, I'll, I'm going to take them. But I'm just like, all right, we did it. Let's keep. I, I think forty six and thirty six can get a sixth. I think he could get a sixth. Mm-hmm. ESPN has us in the seventh slot behind the Celtics by a game. Ew. What? Yeah, get out of here. Get out. Stop here. that, Marcus. With Marcus Smart with who? Marcus Smart is a point guard. Yeah. I'm not buying that. Give me. Give I, me GM Brad Stevens, I am I am shorting that stock. President President of Basketball Operations, Brad Stevens. Let's I, I don't I buy any of that, that whatsoever. Sell it as fast as possible. That team. <laughs> wow. And can I can I break some news here? Yeah. Let's hear it. According to Mark Stein, we were just talking about this. The Dallas Mavericks are expected to sign Frank Nilla. Oh, wow. Let's go. Oh, there it is. Time. Is back. Let's there go. it is. The Frank Hive <laughs> is back. Let's go. Take my words. The NBA, bro. Wow. Say the NBA. Take my wow. France play back in France words and sh- <laughs> the let's Frank go. They got five and KP reunited. The international That's... squad, dude. They're the international squad down there in Dallas. Yeah. Wow. Interesting developments here, fellas. I think it's a, I think it's a great move. Yeah, I, it's a good move for Frank. I mean, yeah, I don't like, yeah, good for Frank. I, I don't know what, like, Brunson on the hot seat. <laughs> I'm, no, kidding, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't, I'm kidding. See, I don't <laughs> see a spot for him in the rotation, but hey, good for him. You know, that's what I'm saying. I don't know where he plays, but good for Frank for staying in the NBA. Yeah. Now, yeah. I know, now, yeah. now the Frank haters will be angry because uh, they thought he was going back uh, overseas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, get but uh, again, back that, to, that Dallas uh, game got even more spicy, man. That yeah. Dallas oh, game got, yeah, even is, more spicy. got even more spicy, man. We got, yeah. t- we, we got Timmy down there. We got KP down there. We got Ooh. Frank down there. It, the rivalry, the rivalry is hot. It's gonna be next West. Yeah. Next West. It's gonna be. It's gonna Bullock. be some animosity. Bullock out Bullock. Out there. Oh, that's true. That's <laughs> right. Oh my Bullock goodness. Wow. Dude, God, forgot about that. It's gonna be a fun. Wow, right. It's gonna be a fun game in the Garden. Wow. DP, I'll see you at the garden. Versus I'll, see the you at the garden I'll see you at the garden. I'm coming down for that one. I, 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 I got, I'll see you all at the garden. I'm coming down for that Let's one. Go, man. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Well, good for him. Good for him on a personal level, you know? Yeah. For sure. Now I can now I can take the R&B album covers down to Dallas. You know, it's That's nice it. and warm out <laughs> there. You can wear the shorts, do whatever, it. have it on button. There you go. That's Frank, it. Good for Frank Nilakina. So, Al, uh, you were saying 40 and 34. So, that, what do you think? That's like fifth? Fifth seed? Yeah. I think we got the. I think we're fifth seed, le- the least six seed. That's that's where I'm going. Uh, that's where I'm team. putting. I'm putting the bar yeah. at the six seed. I, I don't see like I know the East got better, I, like and that's where I'm counting for. Like I think we could if the East didn't make the amount of moves that it did, I could see us getting back to the fourth. But because Miami got Kyle Lowry, uh, and added those guys down there, I see them being better too, especially with better point guard play. And you got to have and, yeah. I'm not, I'm oh wow! Some deep give me, give me, slander. Give me. Depot hasn't been healthy for like two years. I'll That's believe when I see it. I'll believe when I see it. Um, oh, all right. We gotta respect. Old the takes Bucks. exposed. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> tag me right now. Tag it right now when this thing comes out. You can clip it, put it out there. I, I don't care. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, you got to respect the Bucks. We got to respect the uh, not even rivals, just the team over the bridge. Uh, yeah. We got you. Got to respect Miami. You got to respect who else we got. We got in there. Uh, Hawks. Hawks. I, I yes, got to put Hawks. the Hawks there up there. Go. Full Hawks. season with McMillan. Uh, hell, all things considered, health. I, I got to put the Hawks up there as, as a top four. Yeah. Do you care about four. Philly? I it, I really it, don't care about Philly. Doesn't bro. Show up. I really don't care about Philly. I don't. Uh, even if it's, it's John Wall there, like John Wall and Embiid, yeah. it's nice. It's fun. Tobias Harris. Like they're gonna have, win games, but like, am I scared of them? Are you, are you really putting this John Wall thing in the air, man? Well, you're, like, you're oh, he's, been, pro, oh, he's been preaching to CP. He's I, been, been preaching. This I've has been, been happening for, uh, for a minute. I've been, I've, been, I've been saying this for months. Like, there's no – they want they want first-round picks. They want second-round picks, and they need a contract. The only team that has that – I mean, there oh, is Sacramento. Oh. There is Sacramento, but they, they, they're they not going to trade their guys. That's been – that's already stale. And, you know, they could do it in Golden State, but that's stale as well. It has to be Houston. It just has to be. The only gripe is that they're upset with each other. They're just going to have to yeah. man up and make a deal, you know, for business. Like, I, I don't know. That, that, that's, I think Houston's going to be nice, dude. I think Houston, Ben Simmons, Houston would yeah. be nice. I really yeah. think they would be nice. I think he'd be good for them. <laughs> yeah. I think he'd be good for them for sure. But I'm not scared of Philly regardless. I'm just not scared of them. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is about them. You talk about not being healthy. Like even if Embiid is healthy, he's gonna at least one one of those games he's gonna not, you know dribble off his foot. Yeah, like, I, I, I don't know. Factor in some Embiid injury time. <laughs> I just don't. Yeah, I don't know. I yeah, think I, I think Philly, but you know they may be fourth or fifth, honestly. I, I put them under the Hawks at least. I put them under the Hawks. Okay, so okay, so let's put them five. You know, just out of respect, and uh, we'll put us six. But I'm really okay. happy. Yeah, I, we, we can't put Philly six and us five. I feel like that's no, no, no. disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we'll put yeah I'm, I'm putting yeah. Nets, Bucks, Hawks. Got to respect Miami. I think their defense yes. is going to be mm-hmm. fer- ferocious one, yes. once again on the on this bolster with uh, the addition of PJ Tucker, Lowry. I think I think they're going to be filthy again, especially defensively. Health is another thing with them, but I, I'll put Philly after them, and then I'll put us. Yeah, okay. I like that. Yeah, but I don't see Boston whatsoever. You can't sell me on Marcus Smart. No. You can't sell me. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. They're, they're, they're trying to – you can't sell me on that. No, you can't sell – I'm not going we, to. We just saw what happened when you we have a point guard that is not an effective shooter. So, I, I just am not going to buy that. No. Um, and I don't see uh, Peyton Pritchard just coming out here being all whimsical on the court either. No. So, and so then I would leave that with, like, the Celtics, Wizards, Pacers, Bulls. Bulls. Yeah, those teams are the, the teams that make Dude. up the, uh, the play-in. Watch out for the Pacers. Watch out you for know, the Pacers. You know, I did say that too, man. Go I, ahead, love, I really love the Pacers, dude. They have a, like Rick Carlisle now running the show. Like Pacers everything you Carlisle. think about everything you think about Dallas, that's Indiana now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like because he's mm-hmm. been there forever, so he is Dallas. So I'm actually curious about what even is going to transpire over there with Frank and everything. Whatever, but I digress. Sticking with Indiana, my first of all, my most improved player of the actual NBA is is Karis Levert. I think he's going to come off that cancer uh, scare that, you know, was miraculously found through a trade, you know, and like amazing story. He's going to mm-hmm. come back. He's going to kill it. Him and Sabonis, even if, if Miles Turner hangs out there, I mean, they, they have a legitimate squad out there. And to be honest, I am more worried about them than Philly eight out of 10 times. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think that they're going to kill the bulls. I think they're way better than the child. I know the bulls are fun and sexy, Indiana's way better than them. And honestly, like if I had to be, if you gun to my head, Indiana has a better squad than the Knicks. Like gun to my head. Like if, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm just looking at it, like you have like dominant players, you know what I mean? And, and they just mix together. Like I know one by one, I'll take the Knicks. All right. Like Randall versus Sabonis. I'll take Randall. You know what I mean? Who I'm not really miles Turner or Mitch. I kind of yeah. want Mitch like one by one, but just like the cohesion of them. Like they're gonna be a squad, dude. Like I'm, I'm slightly nervous about playing the Pacers, to be honest. I, I think, again, it's a bonus beast mode. Uh, you gotta respect Turner, Brogdon at full strength with Levert. I like that. T.J. Warren. I like the Duarte. I think Duarte is gonna come in it's a and beast pay squad. dividends for them right away. You know, you got McConnell off the bench. I still like our bench better. Mm. Pacers are going to be tough, though. Yeah, and like yo. you said, with Carlisle, I think you got to respect them. And and I, I've I've been saying the Pacers could be up there in, in that top seven uh, this year with, with Carlisle and and a, and a healthy roster for sure. 
you know, that's a competent coach team. and a healthy that's roster. my league pass team yeah. of the year, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. it's, a good, it's a good league pass team. I mean, yeah, they, yeah, that is a good league pass team for sure. They're fun. It's it, that, They're going to be a true, like, all-oriented team basketball team, which will be in the same sphere as the Knicks. But I'm going to have to go with the Knicks just because – you know, I, I like T.J. Warren. I think T.J. Warren is going to be a good player. I like Karis LeVert. We ha- still haven't seen Karis LeVert play a full season with any team that he's been on yet. So you have to ca- uh, ca- you have to factor in yeah. his injury proneness. You know, DeMontis Sabonis is probably the most consistent guy you get on that team. And then Miles Turner. Eh. They, they give me they give me 4 Pistons vibes. Ooh, what? Wow. They, they just give me the vibes. Like, I, obviously not that wow. great. Like, they don't have Chauncey Billups. They don't have Rip Hamilton, but they just give me those vibes. Like, there's nobody that's special, but they 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 play co- – they're cohesive. They have a legitimate coach. You think they can it. defend that way? Sabonis ain't defending nobody. I mean, like, it took them a little bit of time to develop, right, the Pistons. They didn't just show up in 04 and become, you know, that team. It took mm-hmm. them, what, like two, three years? Mm-hmm. I, I, I really do think they're on that path. I I don't know. Like something about this Pacers team like scares me, and something about the Bulls is completely laughable to me. Like you know what I mean? Like so, like the, that juxtaposition. Like I don't know. For in my brain, like everyone's scared of the Bulls. I'm like, who is nah. gonna play defense? It's, nah. They're gonna Bulls have no bench. They have zero bench. No, no bench, no defense besides Patrick yeah. Williams. Like it's yeah. literally yeah. one player. So nah. I don't know. I'm more. I'm. I'm I'm excited for Knicks Pacers games, and it's just it's just funny, dude. Where Knicks Pacers, Knicks Heat, you know what I mean? Just the 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 old the old school Knicks rivalries are so back, and we're actually good. Yeah, we're yeah. actually good, guys. Like the Garden yeah. was rocking last time we were there, so I'm just really excited about you know the Eastern Conference powerhouse. We're no longer the joke. Remember, oh Eastern Conference, ha ha, LeBron Eastern Conference, and now the Western Conference is a joke. It's just a little bit top heavy. And that's it. And yeah. now look at the East. Mm-hmm. True. True, man. I'm he's, just, he's just stepping it up. I'm just shocked that you said Pacers on the trajectory of an 04 <laughs> Pistons. I'm, I'm Dude, just they, really they play, sitting they, over here just confused. They just play like, they just, <laughs> like, they just play, like, I'm not saying they are the 04. They just, like, that is, that's like, if you ask them what their game plan is, like, that's what they have on their board. Like literally, like they just like they have the Larry, they have the coach, they have the players that like fit that role. Like nobody's a superstar. They just kind of play in the middle of the like in the middle of the court, kind of like the the two man. I don't know. Just I, I watch a lot of league pass, you know, as as you know, I watch a lot of NBA and Rick Carlisle on the Pacers, dude. And dude, Levert when he was oh, man, I don't know. Levert I, I think really, offensively, I, I, I like their balance, but they, yeah. they I don't think they'll be their defense to nearly as well. Really? You don't think that you don't think they'll be a, a Rodden, a, yes. Sabonis is he's weak. He's weak. Miles Turner yeah, can play D. But I mean, yeah, Miles Turner, yeah. Miles Turner yeah. can back him up for sure. But Sabonis ain't guarding nobody. Yeah, Levert can play D. Levert. I that's what I'm Brian, saying. And then we got the Warren. You know, like, that's War, it. How's Warren's defense? Warren's, yeah, yeah Tayshawn Prince on that team, man. Yeah, eh? I know. I know. Tayshawn was yeah. that, was yeah. that yeah. guy. Yeah. Every yeah, the, yeah. The starting five defend. I, know, I mean, they got to the they championship. Got, they got Tory <laughs> Craig now, so everything's solved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, I think the paces are good. All right. Well, before we get into more general NBA topic, I want to, I want to, dive off the the beaten path roll because cp we got i gotta ask you man you made a lot of headway going into the season with with the knicks being good you're 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 putting out phenomenal content we see you then just take that next step get on espn and and battle it take it every single tuesday with max kellerman how is that man i want to get a little bit of inside knowledge on that man how how are you how'd you like it yeah it, it was incredible just because like that was never even my goal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like my goal was, I was always just focused on Knicks fan TV and just making fire content, vibing with the fans, you know, having a good post game show. I was very well prepared for a, a 26 win season, you know, and, and a lot yeah. of losses and, and keeping the fans pushing through that. And so, you know, everything was just a roller coaster, man, just, just riding the wave of, of the team's success. And everything kind of just, you know, fell into my lap. Like the whole, it started with the whole Rappaport thing. You know, remember yeah. me and Rappaport yeah. started going yep. back and yep. forth on Twitter. And, and that that was a lot of fun. And then um, I kind of just spoke it into existence, <laughs> man. I think there was one show <laughs> when I was talking about the Rappaport thing, I was like, yeah, Kellerman is next. Yeah. And then next thing I know, you know, I, I get invited on the show. 
And um, and at first I thought it was just going to be like that one time, like us going back and forth on Knicks. And then after that one, they invited me back for a second one. And then we're going back and forth on Knicks, back and forth on Knicks. And then I think after that one, uh, he mentioned it on the show to his producer. He's like, what do you think? Let's, let's bring this guy back you know, every Tuesday or something like that. So I'm like, oh, shit. I remember that. I, I me- he, even, he mentioned that live on the air. He mentioned it live. <laughs> yeah. on the air. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm like, hey, Wild. Hey. Yeah, exactly. Hey, right yeah. on. Yeah. 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 So, and then as, as the shows progressed, it became less Knicks, more LeBron, like Paul Pierce said. Yeah, it's more LeBron. You know, they, they yeah. want to cater to the casual audience, and, and I get it. But, um, you know, he, he started respecting my overall NBA you know, acumen and, and knowledge. And, and that was cool too. Um, so yeah, it, it was just, it was just an incredible, incredible ride, man. Because like I said, I never expected it. I never even, you know, dreamed that that could happen, but uh, I give credit to them for, you know, em- embracing the independent content creator like us, man, because I just feel like we can cover this team. We can talk about this team as good as well or better than anyone that's on mainstream media. And that's not a knock on what these people do, but I think, you know, the fan has become so sophisticated now as compared to years before, based on all all the stats and all the knowledge and everything that's out there on the internet, we can do this ourselves. You know, we can do this ourselves. We may not have the backing of a mainstream media as yet. It's coming. We'll, We'll get there. But I think people people embrace that, you know, so it was I thought it was good for ESPN and those guys to, to recognize that, you know, that that there's a budding ecosystem here of knowledgeable, passionate fans. And they're not just homers. We're not just going to wave the pom poms. You know, if, if these guys stink, they stink and we'll call them out for it. But people are embracing that authenticity more so than just the hot takes of, of sports media. You know, and, mm-hmm. and everybody has their lane. They, they, there's a lane for the hot takes and the skips and Shannons and the first takes and stuff like that. There's a lane for the super analytical, you know, uh, uh, you know, Lakers film room and Knicks film school and, and what those guys are doing. There's a lane for what we do. There's, a, you know, there's a lane for everybody. So, like I said, I think it was just uh, it, it was cool for me to kind of represent, you know, our lane, so to speak, on, on the main stage. And, and for him to respect and embrace it, it, it was great, man. No, absolutely. It was great. I mean, you honestly, like watching you, like your growth through like Knicks fan TV and everything you do, like you have the radio like voice, like you, like you talk about watching uh, Mike and the Mad Dog. And mm-hmm. I just like, when I, when I watch you, when I listen to you, like I, I hear the radio like voice. So that <laughs> it was just like, I hear the rate, I hear the, uh, you have the personality, you have all this stuff. So like you mm-hmm. going on ESPN and being able to do that, I was like, that's the guy to represent us and take on Max Kellerman. I was like, that's the guy who I need out there representing us. So thank you for doing that. And hey, are we going to see with Stephen A. Smith? Because look, you talk about them bringing on fans now and, and content creators and Stephen yeah. A. Smith, you know, Max Kellerman is not part of first take anymore. It, yeah. they, and Stephen A. comes out saying, hey, I'll take on anybody. You know, they had uh that had uh, was it uh, Michael Irvin out there who was yeah, I, I don't know what he was on before he was <laughs> that man was dreaming, ready to go dreaming at the top of his lungs on everything <laughs> ready, ready to go he was ready to rip out Stephen A's head Stephen A was like yo this guy you relax <laughs> relax hey he's a Miami guy I'll just leave it at that he's a Miami guy man. you you take what you want with that I'll, I'll just put it out there you know what I'm saying I just, just put it out and, there. and he's a Dallas Cowboy yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. in the nineties you know what I'm saying so a lot of fun a lot of fun but hey there's a you're talking about ESPN like giving the 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 opportunities. To these to to us, you know, and to, to the to the fans, to everybody, to get on there. So, who knows? Maybe we'll see you with Stephen A. Man. Maybe we'll see you out there. Uh, never doing know, that as well. man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know. you've been I'll, preaching I'll that you, you've been Stephen preaching. A, you've been preaching that you had to go. You have a bone to pick with him too. So I had a hit list. I had my hit list. <laughs> I had my hit list. It was wrapping Crossing them off one by one. Stephen A.'s next, man. You know, I, I had my hit list for sure. That that is really cool, though. Like the especially the Kellerman stuff. So. I think Alex put it perfectly. You were great to represent, quote unquote, us, right? Us, like, you know, I would say, like, you know, Alex and I and, you know, us who, like, we're, you know, we're, I guess we're close and we're friends on, on a personal level, but also, like, 
as as just Knicks fans, you know, as Knicks media, like you represented us, and we were not worried for one second, like, oh no, like CP might do something dumb or might say yeah. something stupid, <laughs> or you know, might you know, might like go overboard, or yeah, you know, yeah. might like you might get frustrated because like, hey man. Uh, there, you know, there was like, you know, fun Knicks talks, but then you had like that, those technical difficulties where, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I know, it, you know, it was a joke, you know, Max Kellerman, you know, he, it's his show, dude, and it's mm-hmm. ESPN and he's gonna, you know, tear you down and he's gonna yeah. make you look like a little boy. Yeah. Right? And, you know, that must have been super frustrating, you know, from your side. So, you know, h- how'd you handle that? You know, because you have yeah. to be super professional, man. This is your first, you know, this is your first time at ESPN, what are you going to say? No, dude, stop. Yeah. You know, like, how, how do you handle that? Got, got to keep it professional, man. And, yeah. and you know, you, you realize that like, yeah, they're trying to haze you and, and trying to, you know, take shots and whatnot. There, there were people that took it way more personally than me. Trust, <laughs> trust to believe. When I was going through the notifications. I was like, whoa, you know, I can't retweet that. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get back on next week, but I hear you though. I hear you. So yeah, it was, um, but you, you take it in stride, man. This, this is ESPN. This, this yeah. is this is a worldwide leader in sports. You know, I've been doing this thing for three years, and I'm on ESPN Radio. I'm on ESPN Plus, and and again, being able to share it on the channel. So you just take it in stride and take it in all good fun. And and I spoke to I've spoken to Max, you know, offline about the whole situation. So yeah. we, we had a laugh about that. And um and you know, I just I just just be myself. You know, I'm not I'm not the 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 rah rah guy that's that's gonna drop an f bomb every two, few sentences. Exactly. Yeah particularly you know, again there's a lane for that and those people that, that, <laughs> that lane, that's good for them but i don't really enjoy that you know i've i've taken pride in trying to make the show as 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 open to to all audiences you know i want the father and son to to listen to it like how me and my dad will listen to sports radio on, on the car rides home and stuff like that so you know i just try to be myself and i'm, I'm not that outlandish rah-rah guy and yeah. just let the chips fall where they may bro ah, i love that dude and I, like you've been you're paving the way uh, for us and for Nick's media. And I mean, dude, like I'm, I'm watching you at the Knicks games, right? Like I'm, I'm at the Knicks games and so are you, and you're working, you know, during the game, but especially after the game, like you're in, you turn from C, you know, you turn from CP to like to Knicks fan TV. Like yeah. as soon as the game's over, right? Like you, you have your hat on tight, like what, it was mask season. So you had like, you were just like, you know, you had your camera okay. going, trying to find the action right i mean i i I don't i I know what words right you're gonna say it was amazing it was unbelievable game two Mm -hmm. all that stuff but like how 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 does it feel to just be that guy right at madison square garden that random people are just coming up to you like yo cp what up and you're like oh dude what's up like i don't you know like oh oh, dude cp oh i called you yesterday like what's good yeah like how how does that feel? How do you navigate that? Like what's what's yeah. that going? It's only been three years, you know what I'm saying? It's not, yeah. like, it's not like you're ten years in the game, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It, it um, you know, it, it feels good, man. I, I can't lie because you you put a lot of a lot of work into it, it's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, a lot of grind, and um, and a lot of again, you know, we did this through a 17 win season, you know, <laughs> it was a lot of losses, man. It was a lot of nights when i was like bro i i, I don't even feel tired like, like <laughs> yeah. i was telling you how there, there'd be sundays where the giants would take an l at one o'clock Knicks would take an l at seven o'clock and you just like yo man I, i'm done I'm, i have no energy but um it's a normal 10 years for me dude i'm a jet <laughs> yeah. you know you know very well you know very well that's every you know? every, every sunday is like yeah that. <laughs> you know you know very well um but then again then then you meet those people at the games and you know, they, they talk about how much, you know, the show means to them, how much it's getting them through. You get those DMs from the people that talk about, especially during the pandemic, man. I had several people say, you know, I was depressed. I was going through this. I was going through that. So it, it means a lot, man. It, it's it's very rewarding. And and you realize that what what we do is it's more than just talk Knicks. It's more than just talk Knicks, man. It's, it's about building community. And, and people really coming together, especially in times like, you know, I barely watch the news now because it's all negative and it's all, yeah. you know, people trying to trying to divide. But this platform is something that we can use to unite people. And this yeah. and, and in the Internet age, you know, we got people from Israel calling in Japan, Jamaica, Barbados, you know, Canada, all over the world. They're, they're tuning in. So it, it's it's um it's just incredible. But I, I got to give credit because. You know, when I say I, I told JLS this one, a long time ago and I was like, bro, you never know who's watching, you know, so you just never know who's watching. So you always want to just make sure your presentation is always up to speed and just keep grinding. 100%. And it was Chuck D. 
You know, yeah. one day, perfect example. One day I woke up on Twitter <laughs> and it's just Chuck D like, yo, I just subscribed to Knicks Fan TV. Everybody do it. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> why? <laughs> yeah. I was like, like, wait, what? And, 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 and then fast forward, dude. Now we're now you guys are like boys. Like I'm, I'm coming out of the, I'm coming out of the garden. I'm like, yo, yeah. what up, CP? You know, saying what up to everyone. And like, oh, Chuck D. Oh, what up, bro? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like what am I? What's going on? And then like, yeah, you know, like, I didn't hold right there. Like, yeah, like, yeah, what up? Like, I don't care what, who you are, whatever. We're just like, yo, game two is nuts, bro. Like, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, so you know, that was prime example of of you never know who's watching, man. And and he's been the the biggest champion, the biggest supporter of the platform. It's how I got on the Kellerman show. Uh, it's how I got on Fat Joe's show. It, it's been Chuck, and and he's done this uh, for a lot of hip hop artists coming up in the game, whether it's, you know, Queen Latifah, Buster Rhymes, so on and so forth, you know, Chuck's impact, his, his, um, you know, just him giving to the culture, man, outside of just being a, 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 a iconic performer, a, a part of an iconic rap group, Chuck's contributions to the culture, he can't be understated. And so, you know, for him to take me under his wing and, and, you know, push me out there, um, I owe I owe a lot to him. To be quite honest, I owe a lot to him. His docu- his also his new pod was awesome. Uh, yeah. were, were you on that? I, I don't remember. It was we, we, yeah, it was on that. Yeah, but so you mm-hmm. you had a clip on that, right? How mm-hmm, how was mm-hmm. that? Was that just like a normal production, or did, were you like involved? You know, in that whole episode at least. Um, the one for the athletic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So similar similar thing. They they called yeah. me up and and uh, he was the he was the voice of it. He narrated it and then yeah. I got interviewed for a couple of the chapters. So again, um, just just he's he's just been pushing me out there, man. So I owe a lot to him. That's awesome, dude. That's all. I you know check yo know, if you're if you're listening right now, you have to check out that that athletic piece with Chuck yeah. D narrating. Oh yeah. man, like the from from beginning to end, it was perfect. It was, it was phenomenal. perfect. It was literally mm-hmm. perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Phenomenal. yeah, it was, it was great, man. Great job by the, those guys at the Athletic for sure. Absolutely. Shout out to Chuck D because it's like uh, I don't know, like I don't know how to put it. It was like a good, such a soothing voice just to like listen about uh-huh. the New York yeah. about the New York Knicks and the history of the New York Knicks. I'm like, oh, we're in a lot right here. Woo, good, good times. Because like for me, you know, it's the the stiff home era. I know for a lot of us was <laughs> oh, kind of like it's painful, man. It was painful. It, it I was, was in high painful, school. Man. That was probably the 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 worst time for me being an Knicks fan because I was so checked in and out, man. It was like in and I was like, how the Knicks do? Oh God, I can't do this right now. I'm like, I really cannot do this right now. <laughs> you man. got embarrassed. You know why? You know why it was worse for me, Alex? Because I was so locked in. I was buying the Starberries and just getting made fun of. Oh, so was embarrassed I. everywhere. Like, oh, why would you wear those eight bucks? Your team stinks. They're worth eight bucks. I'm like, I know, man. I know. I know. We got Marty Collins. I know, but it's okay. <laughs> Othello, Othello Harrington is my starting power forward. Yeah, man. It's all good, oh, Taylor. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, all good. Uh, Malik Rose, you know. Oh, oh man. man. Oh, this is abysmal, man. Abysmal times, bro. <laughs> but now, but now we're in better times. We're in yeah. better times, and you know, shout out to Chuck D. Like I said, that's a great episode. No one's heard, no one's listened to Shattered yet. Please go check it out. It's definitely worthwhile. Yeah. Um, the th- the thing yeah. about Shattered was. Th- Timing was just a bit off, man. Because, I know. You know, you had the hysteria of us on this playoff run, and then Shattered was just about, you know, the terrible, t- terrible t- I last know. 20 years. So it was hard to go back. But yeah, I would definitely recommend people check it out, man, because it, it's a good piece. I love right? history. I love history, and you need to know the history. Like, if you're a Knicks yeah. fan, you and you, you didn't live it for. If you're an upcoming Knicks fan, if you're young and you don't know what's happening, you need to know the history. You have to understand why this season was like so spectacular. You know, 2012, 2013 with Mel was another awesome season. 52 wins, winning the Atlantic, you know, making it out of just the first round for the first time and got what, like 10 years, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. like 10, 12 years. Like that was, that was a miraculous moment. It was fun, but there was nothing, it, it wasn't like this where it was just so unexpected, yeah. so magical uh, for a guy who was hated in New York to just turn it around and lead this team to a four seed. With a with a new with a new head coach, even though he's not unreal, new in the bro. NBA, it's just unreal story. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's a perfect history. time. Right right now is really the perfect time. Perfect I agree time. for to, to listen to it. And just the last last thing, because we're talking about Chuck B, we're talking about Knicks fan TV. I'm gonna make my my official request, CP. Mm-hmm. I need because I also like check out CP's interviews with you know former Knicks players and other, like my your Ron Harper. Your, I mean yeah yeah Derek your, Harper. Derek, your Derek Harper uh, interview was one of my favorite interviews. I tell you that every time I see you, it's literally <laughs> yeah. my favorite interview. Yeah, what am I too, yeah, man? It's what am I too? 
It's really my favorite. But, yo, I know Chuck D is close, and I know this guy I'm about to say is always at Knicks games. Mm-hmm. I need you to get Q-Tip on the pod, man. He's one of my favorite artists too, ever. Too, I know, he's, say, I, know I know, I know he's coming around. I know yeah. he's smelling around. I yeah. need the Q-Tip interview. That is, he's literally like my, I, I mean, tribe, regular Q-Tip. Like that is my, that's my jam right there. So yeah. Stay you know, tuned, man. Yeah, all, all right, right, cool. Like you say, let's, man. Go. Let's, go. let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I like go. that. I like it. Yeah. The stay tuned. That's how you know you got to get hyped. Let's get go. Hyped. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. All right. So let's let's end on this. Let's end on some general NBA stuff because, as I said at the at the beginning of the pod, we had uh, we had a couple uh, reports from uh, Shams today. Uh, let's start off with uh, let's start off with the easy one. Let's start off with Aaron Gordon signing a four year, ninety two million dollar contract extension. Yeah. Wow, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I think I think that just says uh, you can't get players out in Denver. That's how I read it. Um, and oh, I, once you trade th- for somebody, bro, once you trade for somebody, you're you're, you're stuck. You, the yeah. Jamal Adams, you know, yeah. so you you spent too much. You got to Leonard Williams. You know what yeah. I mean? You 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 spend too much. You got to pay him. That's it. True, but do you, I'm going to throw it up for both of you guys. CP, mm-hmm. I'll start off with you. Is this is Aaron Gordon the missing piece for this team to be a championship roster? <laughs> No, I think they're stuck. I think they're going to be stuck in no man's land, especially playing in the West. Uh, Even if Jamal Murray comes back, I I don't see them. They're not going to be better than the Lakers. I don't see them better than the Clippers, the Jazz, or the Suns. So right now I got Denver hovering around fifth. We'll see where the Mavs end up, you know, another year with with Luka Doncic. I just don't, I just don't see it, man. I I just don't see it. A healthy, I put the healthy Laker team in the top three, Utah, I think mm-hmm. is, is a better team top to bottom offensively. And de- one thing about the Denver's defensively, I don't, I just don't see them playing championship caliber defense with the guys they have on their roster. Gordon is a nice versatile defender. I, I think they need more. I think they need more. I don't, I don't think MPJ is going to end up being a, a great defender offensively. He's, he's taking another uh, leap. See what happens when Murray comes back adding, adding Gordon, but I, I just don't see them, uh, you know, on both sides of the ball. I don't think they'll they'll uh, they'll be a championship caliber team. I agree with that. I mean, this past season they were letting other teams just run up the score. So I, I agree with that one hundred percent. What about you, John? Do you think that do you think that uh, Gorn's the missing piece? <laughs> I almost I almost feel like that's a rhetorical question. Like yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying like yeah, he's obviously not the missing piece. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I agree with you guys. You guys have Denver's one of my favorite teams to watch. Uh, I know you're writing for them a little bit, Alex. Like you, but you, so you were you were watching their games uh, pretty closely. They're fun to watch. You mm-hmm. know, Will Barton. They they miss him. They're gonna be they be nicer when he comes back. Um, but uh, are they gonna be top four in, in the West? No. Are they gonna ha- have a fun playoff series though? Hell yeah. I think that's why. I, hey, <laughs> you know, don't count them out. Saying. I think they're gonna be yeah, very think, fun. And, uh, yeah, go ahead. No, no, I think people are gonna be sleeping and. Uh, it, once the playoffs come, I think Denver's going to start shocking some people again. But yeah. I, don't, I don't think they're a championship team. Um, but I think they're going to catch some some teams sleeping sure. as they normally do. Yeah, I just it's just defensively, man. Defensively is where I need to see them take the the next jump and really show that they can stop people. Um, if MPJ is is on a, a a superstar track, I think it'll push them a little bit closer. But I, I don't, you know, the Aaron Gordon stuff doesn't move me at all. Uh, I think it, it was an overpay, but it was it was a cost of doing business. It was a necessary evil for them. You know, you may see him get packaged up and traded eventually to keep the Joker happy. Maybe maybe him and and Murray get traded for somebody. You know, who who knows? But uh, again, he gives him a versatile defender, um, a decent wing offensively. He just hasn't really been that guy since he came into the league. Uh, but you know, the contract the contracts around like. The 45th yeah. highest paid in the league, you know, for, for Aaron Gordon, you know, a guy that, that averaged 10 points, 10, 10 points for you. <laughs> he can go yeah. off. He can go off if Joker stretches it. It's just like yeah. the, the Joker plateau. Like, at what point does the Joker plateau? Like, is he going to start getting 30, 30, 30? Like, you know what I'm saying? At some point, <laughs> he's going to start regressing, right? Like, I, Hey man, he's losing weight. Look, Yo, he's losing shape. weight too, man. Joker Yo, he's losing looking, weight. He's about to be in the best shape of his life. I want to yeah. see what happens, man. Yeah, okay. Joker's losing weight, man. But I was, I was happy to see him win the MVP because I thought it was well deserved for him. Mm. Well for deserved, sure. for sure, for sure. He's, he's a, come on, he's a, he's a point center. You don't even see a point yeah. center in the league. That's just wild. Mm-hmm. Dude was literally holding it down for that team uh, during the playoffs. So I'm happy to see him win it. 
I think Denver will be a fun team as always. I think they'll shock some people. Mm. I think if they could make – see, the thing with me with Utah is I feel like Utah always comes short, so I'm not really – they're a good regular season team. I think yeah. it's always the playoffs with them. And, like, I like Quinn Snyder as a head coach too. I just think when it gets to the playoffs, something just starts to, like, not mesh. Something just starts to fall apart, and I think that's where De- a team like Denver can come in and say, all right, we got our guys, especially if they got Jamal Murray back. Yeah, I think Jamal because Jamal Murray was getting out back on his uh, bubble swag once uh, wait, before his injury. Once the late, the season was starting to get uh, yeah, like what three quarters of the way through the season, that's where he started mm-hmm. to get back into it. But other you know news, what? I I also I forgot the fact that Kawhi Leonard's probably not going to play. Is that all year? Oh. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't think I don't yeah, think the, Clip, I, the Clippers gotta, are whack. Yeah, I got to put yeah. the Clippers down. I got to put the Clippers down, man. So, you don't but, trust Paul George. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not by himself. Even though I, I liked how he played and, and silenced yeah. the critics over the playoffs, um, he was strong. But I, I just felt like the, the Clippers were riding a momentum. You know, I just felt, felt mm-hmm. like they were riding an energy. I don't think they can sustain that over 82-game season without Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Him missing what? He tore he – he Porsche tore his ACL. Yeah. So it, I, he's not going to be coming back anytime soon. I don't see it. And Talk even, about and teams being back, stuck, bro. Hey, Talk about teams being stuck. <laughs> <laughs> he got yeah. paid too. Oh, he owns contract, the Clippers, yeah. bro. He mm-hmm. owns mm-hmm. them. <laughs> He's like, I'm but not hey. gonna play, and you're gonna pay me, and you're not gonna call me. <laughs> like, okay, like, what, like <laughs> who, what's <laughs> happening over there? It's ridiculous, yo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, whew, that is just you want to talk about the course of do, the 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 course of doing business. That's the course of doing business. <laughs> you, you bring in Kawhi Leonard, you're like, I can't let this guy go. Cannot let this guy go. It's wild. But in other news, we also got uh, John Wall and the Rockets, who they had discussions today to mutually part ways. Uh, The five-time All-Star is now looking for a new home. However, there's not going to be a buyout of that $92 million contract, which includes a $47.4 million (laughs) 2022-2023 player option. So who is taking this contract? I, I, I laugh, but... We saw we see Russell Westbrook get moved. I feel like there's just I feel like there's an opportunity for this man to get moved. CP, I'll start with you. What are, what are you thinking? Oh man, I mean, right now I, I gotta go with John in terms of the, the Sixers, man. <laughs> it has to. I, like there's I just, there's no other two spots for these two weirdos. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, you know, I don't see it. Like, like you know, how many teams are clamoring for a guy that hasn't played an 82 game season since 2016? You know, <laughs> making a boatload of money, can't shoot, you know, hasn't been able to shoot his whole career. And and again, you're going to have to put some draft picks on top of that. So I, I don't see it, man. I, Either I way, don't see a team out there that's going to be clamoring for, for this guy. <laughs> Remove hasn't played since 2016. And if you just said it hasn't played like a full season, it, you're talking about both players who can't shoot. Yeah. Do the yeah. same. Well, that's, for a yeah. second. Yes. Yes. Because for a second, I was like, who's he talking about? Was like, yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> at least with Simmons, at least with Simmons, you, you know he's, he's first team all defense. Sure. Right? Yes. Right. You know, there's one thing where he's elite at right now. Right now with John Wall, I mean, what are you really beating down his door for to, to, to bring to your team that, that you say you need? You can't even stay on the court. Yeah. And, and the, the problem with players like John Wall is his number one asset was his speed. Yeah. yeah. So if he loses a step, that's it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like Al, Al Niver said on Memphis, right? Like he was fun, but like he's a slower. So like yeah. he wasn't even Denver AI anymore. He's just, you know, it, it's fun to watch. You can have some plays, but you're going to pay that guy almost 50 mil. No. <laughs> oh no. my goodness, dude. Oh my goodness. N- no chance. Not, not unless you, you're tacking on, you know, a, a couple unprotected firsts on there. You have to. And Houston yeah, has, has them, dude. Houston has Houston, a million Houston picks. Has, yeah. You know, uh, just, but yeah, I think I think Philly would be would be the most intriguing. You know, I don't see any of the contenders clamoring for him. And and what rebuilding team who's in the same position as Houston would want him again, unless you're giving them a, a mega incentive to to take him on. I, I I just don't I don't see the fit outside of Philly where it's just right now Ben Simmons is holding him up at gunpoint. Yeah, and I don't and I I agree with both of you, and I think. At this point, if you're Daryl Morey, you just have to – you lost your chance. You should have went for James Harden. You should have threw Tyrese Maxey in to get James Harden last season. You failed on that. Just go back to the well. Just ask these guys, say, hey, <laughs> Ben Simmons, 
We got to move him because if Ben's not going to start training camp, you're already you're you're already behind the eight ball. You're yeah. what? What are you doing at that point? If if you don't have Ben Simmons out there, I don't even I I feel he's not even a f- top five team. There, then we can switch with them and say Embiid. Sure, forget respect. Like Embiid's not going to play a full season. Never has. Won't happen anytime soon. Uh, at that point, it puts Philly in like a, it could put them in a spiral to be a play-in team after being in a top four. Ooh, it's all about man. hot takes. Good. This guy's gonna have Philly in the play. Good. Good. <laughs> hey, you never know, man. Never know. Good. All you right. can clip. You can clip that, and you can clip my depot. My depot take. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna send that over to Claudia. <laughs> 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 oh, oh man. man all right last thing and then we can get out of here do you think do you think players are done with this testing free agency and and i say this because as knicks fans people are saying what's way for the 2022 free agency class and i look at the 22 free agency class you know with with steph uh you had Kawhi, you had all these names and everyone signed up everyone took contract extensions um is that just going to be the 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 new way of the NBA? Are players just going to ask for trades, get their guaranteed money, and ask for a trade if they don't like it? Because as of right now, that's kind of what it looks like. Kevin Durant also signed up too. That, that's what I'm expecting. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I think so, man. I, I think you know when you when you're looking at their uh, up to thirty five percent more in an extra year guaranteed money in a, on a super max deal. Exactly. Because his players are gonna take that bag. Like, you know exactly, I mean? yo. Especially the ones, some of the ones that you know, Steph has won already. His bread is buttered a long time ago. He's he's mm-hmm. good. So you know, he's getting another forty million dollar bag. That, that's that's excellent for him. You see Embiid read up already. Uh, we'll see what happens with Bradley Beal and Levine. But I think overall, some players may just say you know forget the whole dog and pony show and and you know the whole some plays i think in, in previous years had liked to be courted and have their name out there but uh, others i just think with that up to 35 percent out there man just <laughs> they're just going to take the bag and then figure out the rest later because you for can sure. ultimately get dealt while you're in the middle of that deal as contracts continue to go up for sure i mean look even jimmy Bower took a contract extension as well so that's where it's like I don't know. What do you got? Do you, so like, if we agree that the league is just moving in a direction where everyone's just taking the contract extension, what are trades going to look like then? How many first are we dealing? How is roster construction going to take a hit at this point? So John, what do you think? What do you think's on roster construction? Well, this is the whole thing, man. These are the unintended consequences of the collective bargaining agreement, right? So they were sitting down to negotiate and the, the owners were extremely pissed off about how LeBron and company changed free agency like in the span of like three years all of a sudden free agency just became a circus where like all of a sudden everyone's going to be a free agent teams are going to just start stripping team you know their salary so they can wait for these players Mm -hmm. to all join up and hopefully be them and so the owners were like whoa we need and then like you know lebron and rich paul and we know how that is right so the nba was trying to get a stronghold on that and so they said how do we keep players you know, in small markets, let's add that incentive that CB was talking about. And you know, what's funny. I'm, uh, I'm talking with my brother, right. Who has, who was a huge Knicks fan. Uh, he's been interacting with CP and, you know, all the Knicks media for, for years and years. He's the one that got me on to the Knicks. We were talking about before Kemba came, you know, we're just talking about Luca, just, you know, just casually, right. You know, you know, he likes the Knicks. We need a point guard. He hates Dallas. You know, what, what's going on? With, you know, he's wearing mellow shirts, you know, <laughs> you know, what's, you know, what's going on with Luca? Should we wait for him? The first thought out of our head simultaneously was if this guy doesn't take the extension, I don't want this player because he's actually an idiot. Like, a, <laughs> a, oh, yeah, a, oh. yeah, like this guy is actually an idiot. Yeah. So, like, like if he doesn't take that deal, says no, 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 I'm not gonna take that. I want to go to the Knicks instead, dude. You're a moron. I actually don't want you. I don't trust you. Like, I, I, like, I really don't, <laughs> I don't trust, trust you. Judge <laughs> yeah, I, I really don't trust don't. you. Judge so, the, the unintended consequence is one: the players will take that deal and they will stay, but they're gonna stronghold you and they're going to force their way to do the trade like alex said and the other unintended consequence that is starting to peak its ugly head but it's going to start becoming more apparent is draft picks are just becoming so worthless 
Like, oh, you want seven first round picks so I can get KD? Otherwise, I'm never going to be able to get, you know, another star player again. Okay. You know, take them, you know, enjoy, you know, <laughs> like, and, and I'll protect them. And who cares if you have my first pick, if I have, you know, these guys that you're giving me. And that used to be like the NBA 2K way to go about it. But because yeah. of the, you know, these consequences where you just eliminated free agency for premier players. Now free agency is really middle tier. It's really like the oh, NFL. Boy. It's like the NFL. Like you never see like a real player going, you know, to yeah. the NFL free agency. They lock them up. And once they're basically done with them, they're like, all right, go ahead, man. Test the market. You see what's up. So I think that's really what it's going to be for the NBA, you know, going like 10 years from now. I really think free agency is not going to be a real thing. You're not going to be like, yo, I can't wait for free agency next year. I don't think that's going to be a real thing. Okay. CP, what are your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, if you look at the history, right, you go back like 10 years. um, I mean, outside of LeBron, Katie, and maybe Kawhi Leonard, I mean, there really haven't been those like, you know, title wave free agency signings for year after year. You know what I mean? A lot of guys just stay with their team and and then end up getting dealt. You know, Jimmy Butler was was a sign and trade to the Heat from uh, from the Timberwolves. Um, You know, Clay stayed with the Warriors. I'm just trying to think of like these these top all star guys. You know, a lot of guy, a lot of the top tier guys really don't just jump ship after free agent donovan mitchell he doesn't want i'm sure he doesn't want to stay in utah right right (laughs) he signed his deal lucas signed his deal because you can get your bag get your security as they should it's it's a player's league you know and and i always advocate for these guys to do do what's best for them because you know once they get a a catastrophic knee injury they're they're out of here you know football Mm -hmm. is worse but Mm -hmm. uh, you know basketball is a similar situation so i I just think that the path as john was saying is going to be trade it, it's going to be trade. So I think that's why the Knicks did what they did in terms of running it back. They, they maxed out the cap with team friendly deals, you know, two plus ones uh, with four and eights, a three plus one, and all the plus ones are, are full team options. So there's no partial guarantees there. Yep. So mm-hmm. now you have tradable contracts, you're building your team for stability, for continuity and to compete at the same time. And I think that that's the way to go. And, and yet they still have, you know, uh, their, their draft capital and maybe some young pieces that they can develop and, and you know, uh, parse off for a trade here and there. For sure. I agree with both your both your I agree with both your analysis on the state of the NBA, like how things are moving. And actually, that's where I kind of think and I'm not I don't know every team's contract situation, but I think this is where the Knicks are slightly ahead of the game and getting those team option contracts and really being on that team option contracts right where they look like hey we're going to make a trade at some point yeah what's more enticing than a guy with two years on two years on his contract but really one year and the other one's an option for that team to pick it up i think they're getting ready for 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 the new wave of contracts and how teams are being built so i like where this is where it comes to think like wow we actually have a competent Competent, that's Yeah, that's think that's forward thinking, which is just shocking. Gives me mm-hmm. goosebumps all the time. But guys, I love this conversation. It was a great conversation. I think this is a good place uh, to end it. We've been doing this for about what well, looks like to be like an hour fifteen at this point. It's getting a little late. I know we got work in the morning. So CP, please let our listeners know, although they should already know where to find you. Please let them know where to find you and if any projects you got up for for them to stay tuned for. Yeah, no doubt, man. You know, it's YouTube.com slash KnicksFanTV. We also got KnicksFanTV.com that, that you're writing for, lead, leading the charge on KnicksFanTV.com. So, so we're growing them out there as well. Also on, on all major podcast platforms on the KnicksFanTV. So definitely appreciate you guys, man. Anytime. Hit Thank that you, thumbs CP. up for your boy. Hit that <laughs> exactly. thumbs up for your boy for sure. <laughs> boys, all day, bro. <laughs> CP, thank you for coming on. Always appreciate it. Always enjoy chopping it up with you. Yep. And for our listeners out there, you know what you got to do. We're on YouTube now, so you got to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, because you got to get all these new episodes when they drop. On top of that, if you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, please make sure to give us a five-star review and to leave a comment. It's the right thing to do. And if you don't, if you don't listen to us on Apple Podcasts, it's okay. We're on Spotify, Google Play, Amazon, Alexa, Stitcher, you name it, we're already there. Last and certainly not least, please make sure to follow us on all social media platforms. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And last but certainly not least, we have a Madden 2022 giveaway. 
All right. The MVP edition can be played on either platform. All right. Back and forth. PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X. We got both copies. Please make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on one of our social media platforms. Take screenshots of both. Email us, email us at nicksjetsetc at gmail.com. Tell us which platform you have so that way we can give you the copy and you'll be entered in for that giveaway. All right. But we'll catch you later, everyone. Stay tuned this week for another Jets episode of the Knicks Jets Etc. podcast. Let's go, Knicks. <laughs>